Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're missing Connie today, who couldn't be with us, but we are so excited to have you on the couch today and, and talking with you. So, you know, I've known you sort of a little bit over the years, but it's so exciting to know that you are an expert in emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. And with all this Harvey and Irma and all these fears and weather things going on, yeah. you are busy and all over the place, and it's fascinating what you do. Well, oh, thank so you. So welcome, yeah. Lisa Jackson. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Lisa thank Jackson, you. and obviously resident of Hopkinton, yep. and a mom, and many things. Oh, Lisa thank with you. two eyes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, L-I-I-S-A. Why is that? Well, tell it's me about a that Swedish spelling, spelling so, okay. but most people think it's a typo, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm like, you can spell it the other way. I'll answer it. You know, both, but it's, it's a Swedish word. So it's Swedish how they yeah, say it. Yeah, and my family um, is Swedish from Idaho, from yeah. the New Sweden area. Wow, so we were talking about that in the elevator, from Idaho. How long have you lived in Hopkinton? Since 1987. Okay. So I've been wow. here longer than I was in Idaho. Wow. So, 30 <laughs> it's like years. like Ohio. Yeah. I've been here, you know, longer yeah. than I was in 30 Texas. years, yeah. yeah. So. And emergency preparedness. Yes. So fill us in. Give us the whole scoop on what you're doing and sure. what, what that work so, is. So my yeah. main um, project is the Medical Reserve Corps, and it's, it's a local asset. There actually are um, 250,000 volunteers across the entire country. Each state ha has a Medical Reserve Corps or multiple Medical Reserve Corps. They're usually housed under emergency management or public health. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they are funded through um, NACHO, which is National Association of um, 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 Health and I'm trying to remember what it is, yeah. but it's, 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 it works with public health in, in HHS. So those are where we get kind of our funding. And we used to be under the Surgeon General's office, and okay. now we're under ASPR. But we also work with many response partners. So obviously we work with FEMA, we work with in-state emergency management, which would be MEMA in Massachusetts. We have uh, other um, NGOs, um, non-governmental agencies that we work with, Salvation Army, American Red Cross, yeah. ASPCA, Doctors Without Borders. I mean, you name it, we wow. do lots of partnerships. The Medical Reserve Corps is considered to be a local asset. Okay. So it's really, meant to stay within state, but we certainly um, can deploy, but we would deploy out of state with um, other organizations. So we're really meant to stay here. Um, and, and throughout the state, we have over 14,000 volunteers. So what is your role as the chief master coordinator? Yeah. What's that role? So I cover 12 of the MRC units in the state. Mm -hmm. um, I am director coordinator for mm -hmm. most of them. I write multiple grants to support mm -hmm. their activities. We do anything from, obviously, we do emergency preparedness. We do emergency shelter operations, um, emergency dispensing sites. So if there's a pandemic, you remember H1N1, most of those flu yeah, clinics yes. were staffed by Medical Reserve Corps volunteers. So we kind of handled the medical in, but we've started really expanding. We started out medical, and now we're really expanding into other areas of emergency preparedness. We also have an animal team. Oh. So we would do animal shelter operations, things like that. We, we were at the Boston Marathon finish mm -hmm. line. We help along with first aid booths along the, the marathon route. Um, we do public health outreach. Mm -hmm. um, we do local flu clinics. We do sunscreen clinics. I mean, we wow. do, we kind of, you name it. So anything that's associated with public health, a lot of times the Medical Reserve Corps. And we started just getting um, involved in the opiate crisis. Mm. So we've been partnering with police departments to do follow-up post-overdose. Wow. So that's something our Medical Reserve Corps volunteers are starting to do as well. So. I could pepper you with questions. I think, Darlene, you had. Yeah, Were go you ahead, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you've been around, I've known you for years. Yes. And, um, I remember one of the things that um, I took f was that I met, I met you through the neighborhood and things like that, but the, um, we don't live in the same neighborhood. But, um, but I'm that, in your neighborhood. Yeah, you're in my neighborhood a lot <laughs> yes. at some point. The but global the, um, neighborhood of yeah, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. The high school does that healthy fair. Yes. And for several years, you were there actually yes. displaying for the Medical Reserve Corps, yes. talking about what it is, giving kids t-shirts, telling them uh, parents how they could get involved, yes. and signing up volunteers right there on the spot in yeah. Hopkinton. Yeah. And then next to it, you had the thing where you could like 
Your 72-hour kit, your bug-out bag. Yeah, yeah, your bug-out bag, and then the thing um, with um, the Cancer Society where you can, like, look in and see how much, like, how bad your face has been, like, yeah, free from the sun. sun. Yes. Really? And that yeah. was all right here in Hoppington. Cancer and I screening, think, yeah. I mean. We do blood pressure clinics and, yeah. That's, I mean, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean, what are, when you, oh, <laughs> sorry, oh, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> and, and I think that, you know, and that goes back years, because I know I haven't gone to one of those fairs mm -hmm. in years. Right. And I've seen more and more now, more impressions in the media, even on the Medical Reserve sure. Corps. So I yeah. think it's grown a lot. Right. I think there's been more of awareness of, over the last couple of years, it's, it seems like there's been more. So, yeah. so interestingly enough, the Medical Reserve Corps started in 2001. Mm -hmm. um, George Bush, President George Bush, mm -hmm. um, W. Bush at that time started the Medical Reserve Corps post 9-11. Oh. And it was in okay. response to many first or medical okay. people responding to the scene of 9-11 offering to help and they were not credentialed mm -hmm. or quarried or we didn't know mm -hmm. who they were. Right. So, right. so that was why the Medical Reserve Corps was really initiated and that program started. And it's under Citizen Corps and um, Vista Corps and things like that. So it's, it's, it's a, a fairly new oh, yeah. um, organization or, you know, entity of the government, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just, it was need-based, and then it kind of is, has grown and expanded and it from really beyond there. it seems to be a vehicle where others can get involved. It's another where, place where people can volunteer. Right. So, you know, we can talk about Harvey and Irma and these great storms, yeah. but, you know, what, what, do you, what should our community know or be thinking about that we may not be thinking about I as mean, far as first preparedness? And f first and foremost, I, I like to promote personal preparedness and family okay. preparedness because in a disaster, I don't really want to be taking care of us. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want to be taking care of those folks that really need it, people that are relying on oxygen for mm -hmm. oxygen concentrator or home dialysis or, or something mm -hmm. like that, that, that they really cannot care for themselves mm -hmm. without power or without services. Mm -hmm. What I would recommend is, you know, obviously people um, volunteer for the Medical Reserve Corps or, or other organizations. It's very easy to do in Massachusetts. It's www.maresponds.org okay. and they would connect you with the, whatever unit um, you would be associated with. But along with that, I think um, family preparedness and, and we were having a conversation prior to mm. this, this interview about personal and family preparedness and it's so important to have a kit in your car mm. um, that's you know has basic supplies in it, power bars, water, mm -hmm. things like that. A 72 hour kit generally has a gallon of water per person. Mm -hmm. You have non-perishable food. You have the hand crank radio mm -hmm. that could charge your phone and you can actually listen to what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so you're aware of the situation because if everything's knocked out, your information is power. Right. Um, and, and also you, you want to have clothing for every mm -hmm. season within there. And this is for each one of your family members. You want to have a first aid kit. You want to have burn cream. Oh, um, in your car. You, yeah. Right? yeah. Okay. But it's, it's a so very small kit. It's small. The trunk. Yeah. Yeah. small. I mean, I, I have a little, like, LL Bean backpack yeah, that's about this big that has big. everybody's stuff. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. not everybody's stuff. I think it's got a it's got wind jackets and yeah. a couple it has a couple blanket like you the, the squishy the so blankets small. that. Um, well, living in Minnesota, we did that in the winter. Right. I mean, you didn't leave that. You didn't leave the house right. without some key things. But I never think about that here right, or but, year but, round. Yeah. But you know what? It's but some of the emergencies aren't like a natural disaster right. either. It can be your car breaking down. Right. It can sure. Be right. like, an accident, you know. You're, you're helping someone, someone else. I mean, right. you're, 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 I mean, there could be a, a situation where, and I, I dip in my kit all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, kids get hurt or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Then you have your first aid kit. My yeah. friend broke her hand the other day, so I had a splint and, you know. <laughs> you're ready. Yeah, it was like, be right, right, a nice pack. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, off you go to the hospital, you know. Yeah. So it's, you know, those things are just, you know, really, I think it's, mm. it just makes you feel better to have that, that stuff in place. And, and a great source of information for that is www.ready.gov. Right. Okay. Yeah. And that is, that is from FEMA. You can get a lot of free publications that you mm -hmm. can share with your family members and friends. Um, so that's really important. And then within your businesses and, mm -hmm. and, and whatever you touch, your, yeah. your cultural capital. It's, it's funny because it's like, you know, it's rarely you go into the kits unless you, something happens. You should do it twice a year. And I, um, <laughs> to revamp. in July, I, I was driving someplace and I scratched myself and my arm was bleeding. I'm like, all right, when I stop the car, I'll go in the kit and 
get one of those wet wipes and a Band-Aid. Yeah. You open it up, the wet wipe has been dried out for like 10 years. Oh, the Band-Aids yeah. are falling apart. Yeah. I'm like, all right. And stuff like, so, you know, in August, I went out and we bought, we got new first aid kits for every yeah. car for up in Maine for the house. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's one everywhere, but it was like, you forget that they, if it's not used, the stuff actually expires in it, right. too. Right. Everything yeah. from the aspirin that's, that's in it true. and the, um, the cool packs expire. Right. I just tell people to recycle it in the things they use in their home. Mm -hmm. So, you mm -hmm. know, we have our own little first aid kits in the house. You remove those Band-Aids and the, the cream right. and the, the alcohol swabs and all those things. And you in put it, yeah, yeah, you put it back in your medicine chest and mm -hmm. then you put the new stuff back in there. And the same with the water and the snacks. And, yeah. you know, and I always tell people to pack a book and, mm -hmm. and also to have insurance information. So on your house, right. your car. Right. Um, copies of deeds to your property, um, mm -hmm. birth certificates, social security cards, and I tell people to laminate it yeah. and have it in a safe place because we live same in with a, the, Same with phone numbers. Right. And, right. and Because so if your key. phone goes dead, I yeah. couldn't call but three people in the world. Right. <laughs> I mean, we used to remember phone numbers, but now yeah. it, it's something that we don't do anymore. So that, again, you, mm -hmm. you take your contact list and Outlook right. and you print it out and you laminate it or throw it in a Ziploc bag. Right. Right. And, right. Then right. You, and then when you do just set an anniversary, say September is preparedness month. Mm -hmm. So you do it in September and then six months later, you would do it again in those six months and you just rotate it out. And you make it fun for yeah. your family. We were talking previously about an escape ladder in your home. Yeah. How do you evacuate your home? So just have a drill with your kids, you mm -hmm. know, with your family. We haven't done it since they were little. Right. I, know. Like, I know. As they get older, you get busy. I, I realize, like, when, we, when I'm saying, oh, yeah, we used to do it and I, where the ladder is. And I'm like, you know what? I don't think we've done it since like Melissa was real little and right. she's a senior in high school now. You right. tend to do it when you have little kids, but you But hopefully to do it this time. this show yeah. will prompt people to look at that again cuz we don't think about it all the time and then something like, you know, obviously the devastation in Harvey and the mm -hmm. images we're seeing on television and then you know, the impending um, devastation with Irma. Yeah. So those are things we see and we do live in, you know, near the ocean and mm -hmm. things like that. And, and actually, um, we should talk a little bit about disasters that could happen in Hopkinton. Yes, please. We, we do have the LNG facility, the liquefied natural gas facility here um, in Hopkinton. Yep, listen yeah. up, folks, because I was yeah. getting educated just as we talked. And, and, and also, we live along two very um, busy highways. So yes. you can have a rollover with you know, biohazard, mm -hmm. or you can have a rollover with um, gasoline, chlorine, anything like that. And, and a lot of our com community abuts mm -hmm. um, 495 in the Mass Pike. Yes. So those are things that you could, you could get contamination from and you'd have to evacuate your home. Mm. So, and then the next thing is to, you know, we have tornadoes. Mm -hmm. We had a microburst here. We did have a tornado in Western Mass that um, prompted um, shelter operations that I manage for a whole month. Um, and, and we also have snow and ice storms. That's true. So if you remember in 2008, the whole middle part of the state was yes. basically taken out for almost three weeks right, right. from ice storms. If you drove out there, it looked like a different planet. That's right, yeah. So when wow. you go and manage a shelter, mm -hmm. have the people gotten there themselves? Have they, have they been brought there by emergency it's, it's, or are, are people actually knocking on the door like you've got to go yeah it's there's a there's a multiple um list of things that happen so a lot of people shelter in place so if there's nothing damaging within their home so what we see is there there's a surge right away of those folks that are particularly vulnerable so the people without power they're starting to get cold they have small children in the house they have medical needs, things like that. So those are things we, a lot of times, those are our initial push that we see in the shelter. Most families, like, you know, that can, they'll shelter in place generally for two days. So I have an algorithm that I developed and you kind of look at if it's below 20 degrees for more than three days, then mm -hmm. that those two days you start seeing a lot more people coming into the shelters because they just can't shelter in place anymore. And I mean, pipes my are bursting in always their house. elderly. Mm -hmm. Right, and and, and, and they don't want to leave their homes. Right, and that's something we've we've done quite a lot of work with. We work with senior centers, visiting nurses. Obviously, EMS knows who those folks that are vulnerable because they see them and take them to the hospital. But also, it's really important for those elderly people to register and let mm -hmm. people know, hey, I'm homebound, and, right. and and let the fire department know. Do you talk to the senior center? Have you? Um, I've had worked with I've mm -hmm. worked with the senior center. We've done flu clinics over there. We've I've done preparedness um, mm -hmm. presentations over there. 
Um, there is a lot of information for seniors, and you have a very active senior center here mm -hmm. in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. um, so that, you know, again, those folks a lot of times end up being our volunteers, yeah. but also they, you know, the senior centers in most communities, because they have a generator, end up being a shelter mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they serve that population. That population already knows it. And, you know, it could be a shelter, warming, cooling center. Wow. And the police sends out alerts. So they you can do. get them on your phone. You can get the phone calls. We right. get texts on every cell phone in our house, right. and um, so you know when like there was a you know a flash flood emergency last week. How do we weekend. get that set up? Because we so used to get that to our it, home. It, phones, so that's but really that's a important. Cell phone. It's yeah. really easy to do. Yeah. yeah. How do we do that? So if you want to talk about, or I can talk about within your community, you have yes. to register all those lines of communication because most people, if your name is is public, mm -hmm. so Lisa Jackson or whatever. Yeah. I will get that message on my landline, which I don't answer because right. it's a fax machine. That's what mine turns so, into. Yes. But again, you can register. Yeah. And, and I, I've done it to like you know my 85 year old father. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean you can register? You go, like, register you go to your, where? You go to the website you of the police red. department, okay. and it says code red on it. You okay. click on it, mm -hmm. and you just put in your name and your cell number. Name, cell number. I'm over. doing that today. So, yeah. Every, yeah. so every time like there's like when um, there was like a um, a threat at the library a couple yes. of years ago. Yeah. Um, I, everyone in our house got an alert on our phone, yeah. like, you know, please be right. careful. We were asking people not to go downtown at this point. Right. You know, we're on shutdown. You know, there was a flash well, flood. Price Chopper. Price I mean, Chopper. I, I got them on every single cell phone yeah. in our house. Well, I think a lot of people like you have to would, register. would have had this because it was automatic when it was on your home. You right, know, landline. landline. But, but we, now that we're all cell phone users. Well, you know, weird. Yeah. It wasn't all automatic, too, because we didn't have emergency 911 response till what, less than 20 years ago well, here? Well, it, it didn't, yeah. I would say, I mean, I moved here 17 years ago, and it was just right prior to that. Right. And the technology is I know the first few years we had it that it we didn't have. It was connected at right. that point. So you right. didn't have this emergency. Red. So, you know. Yeah, we used to get it on the landline, but I got to do that step. And, and, and that's, yeah. that's one very important step, just mm -hmm. be informed. And also within Massachusetts, um, if you have a smartphone, you can use the ping alerts. And mm -hmm. I posted that on Facebook many times. And it uses GPS. Mm -hmm. So if you're, say, I'm in Gloucester, um, if there's a disaster or something there, I will get a ping alert mm -hmm. um, that something's going on there, say coastal flooding or something right. like that, mm -hmm. or wherever I am you sign up for those ping alerts, and that's through MEMA, right. Massachusetts Emergency Management. So the ping alerts is an app, and you can decide how severe you want to see it, but it'll tell you about weather. It'll it's, tell you about, like we had a, you know, a tornado, several tornado mm -hmm. warnings. It tells you so about that. So is there one place that we could get a few, not you know, a few of these key things. Well, ready.com right. has it. Yeah, ready. And it, it actually yeah. tells you how to build these kits. Yep. It also tells you what to do if it was a blizzard, a, well, a hurricane. Well, I'm also thinking of being able to get these pings. We were down the Cape on the vineyard this summer, yeah. and they had an incredible rainstorm. Yeah. And, and there was um, flooding. And there was flooding, and but the rental we had, the street was flooding, and I thought, wait a minute, we are not in the loop here because we aren't full-time right. residents. But once you've signed up for Code Red, and then yes. you enable GPS on your phone, mm -hmm. it's going to follow you anywhere you are. So right. even if you just and do ping. Code Red in... Code Red yeah. is, is not just Hopkinton base. It's everywhere. So once right. you've signed up... But you can sign up on the police station yeah. website. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And, the, you know, I, I think it's also on the town website. Right. I think it's it on the is. home It's a little town. harder. I mean, it's actually... Everything's hard to find on the town yeah. website. Yeah. It's getting yeah. better. Yes. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the police department's the, website the is a little... The police department's good. separate website's a little bit easier to <laughs> yeah. navigate through. But again, I mean, th those are things that are just easy to do. And again, just be prepared and uh, be aware uh -huh. of your surroundings. I mean, just... And, and one thing that I find, I speak to colleges and universities all the time, that generation of college and universities and even high school students there, they don't get information like we do. Like mm -hmm. we still listen to media, we still mm -hmm. watch the news, we still get information that way. I'll ask these students like where, how do you know there's a disaster? Like uh, my parents call me or <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and, right. <laughs> yeah you know, somehow it's only on their phone. Right. Right. Yeah. So, the, you know, it's really important for people to know how to access that information. And probably the right. easiest way for that generation is to have a ping alert. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? So that would, that would capture you I'm anywhere. I'm my kids in New York City that as well. Right. I and mean, I'm, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of funny. Is, um, you know, my son goes to a college that um, it takes years to get perks in your room. Mm -hmm. So this year, because he's rooming with a okay. senior, he can get, they get a refrigerator and a TV. And I said, well, do you want a TV? No, we're not going to watch it. We do everything either on their yeah. laptop with Netflix, mm -hmm. or he goes, or I'm watching just videos on like you know his phone and stuff. Right. Yeah, he's like, now that you know, 
They didn't yeah. want the TV. Right. I mean, I yeah, I don't use it a lot. I listen to it in the morning. I have yeah. local cable. I have Comcast, and you know, and that's that's the thing. But it's I don't think this new generation is co is connected, and they're so tied right. to their phone. I mean, also on Radio.gov is you can get family communication cards. So back to those mm -hmm. phone numbers, mm -hmm. even your smaller children, you should have those that that information. Yeah. So they they're not calling Nana Banana in Florida <laughs> and right. have an out of state contact on there. And you know, I mean, Hopkinton does a really good job with the daycares and the schools of getting yes. that information. But again, you need to talk to your children about where would we meet. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, how right. often are we exactly by our children's side or by our um, elderly parents' side? Mm -hmm. You know, like how would we connect with each other if a disaster happened? Because very quickly, those those that communication goes down. That's mm -hmm. the first thing that goes down. I mean, I think we're fortunate too that NEMA is so close to us too. So yeah. everything for the hub of that communication is only happening. Eight miles from yeah, us, literally right. so in the bunker, right? right. right. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, and I mean now I know you've been in there a zillion times, yeah. and I've toured it a couple it's times. Cool. Yeah. And when you keep going down and down and level and find out this is where the governor's going to come in, mm -hmm. this is like where all the communication. I met Obama down there. You know? yeah. Really? There's wow. a mor there's a morgue <laughs> yeah. down there. There's a mini hospital all underground. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm aware of that. I've never been inside, but it's yeah. a beautifully landscaped. M E M A. You know, yeah, and all you hill. see is a little hill. Yeah, yeah and the so old truck. Pretty, yep. pretty and benign. And yeah. it's probably what six oh, six stories underneath. Oh yeah. And, and no. big. And bigger than a Walmart each floor. Wow. Oh, yeah. It's huge. Unbelievable. Yeah, and the operations that are down there. Are, yeah, I mean, in any state disaster, I go through ESF-8 and ESF-6, which is mass care and health and medical. So those are, those are essential functions mm -hmm. um, through MEMA and FEMA, and I work under those two functions. Mm -hmm. So when a disaster happens, I'll call in and say, I have 45 volunteers. They're ready mm -hmm. to go. 20 of them are nurses, and 15 of them are not medical but they're quarry sorried and you know Definitely. credentialed so you know any statewide disaster we I check in with ESF 8 or ESF 6 pretty mm -hmm. regularly. So how did you get in this field Lisa? That's kind of an interesting story. Um, I started here in Hopkinton and got really involved in developing trails, and I got on the land use study committee. And well, when we back up one yeah, second, right. yeah. <laughs> she, she got really involved. She is actually the founder of the trails committee. The whole trails thing wow. is because of Lisa. She started it all. Oh, you're so when, sweet. So when and she I, actually I built the center trail, the original so piece. She built of, it. Yeah. So <laughs> what the there are a lot of people idea. who come to the community and don't immediately get involved. When Lisa got in, came, she immediately dug her hands in and got so involved in everything. So how long ago was this? <laughs> 13, 13 years ago. Years ago. Wow. I was a stay-at-home mom for yeah. two years. Okay. So. She didn't know what to do with a baby. She was <laughs> born. So I'm like, all right, Celia, we're going. You know? <laughs> right. so, well, we're digging out a trail. But the whole yeah. daughter's beautiful. Beautiful oh, Celia, you. 13 years oh, old. She's wonderful. Goes to the middle school, I Yeah, presume? she's yeah. in eighth grade. That's yeah, awesome. She's wonderful, yeah. But building the trails, I mean, really getting the town to even think about trails? Yeah. Tell me what it all It, it yeah. started all that. It started at town meeting. I requested $30,000 of community preservation funding, funding from CPA to, mm -hmm. to develop that trail because it was all trees and woods yeah. and it was garbage there, you know. Yeah, so, wow. And there had been a feasibility study done back in 1997 when they built the high school in Hopkins, okay, right. which cost $100,000, and I'm not going to speak about that very much because <laughs> nothing happened out of it. Mm. So I had information. We like studies. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we like we, studies. You know, and I worked very closely with Elaine Lazarus, and mm -hmm. I worked with John Coolidge on the CPA, and you know what I mean? So Probably John Ritz. Yeah, yeah. John Ritz, was he was one of our original. Initial with the trails. Yeah, he's been, and he's carried on on the work yeah. him and um, the trails club have kind of carried on the work that I started but it, it it's just it was I got involved in the community and then of course I live right next to Weston nurseries mm -hmm. and when that came up for sale under 61a I was like well geez those are all my trails and mm -hmm. there's all that open space and then I started learning of the impact on the community of you know, single family homes being built there, or being developed under the current zoning and things like that. So I got myself on the land use study committee. Okay. Um, and, and then we started looking at the planning process of that. And I quite frankly wanted the town to purchase it under mm -hmm. 61A. I think a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, we went to town meeting and we lost it by three votes, mm -hmm. um, which was oh. probably the largest town meeting we ever had. So mm -hmm. I started that community organizing um, mm -hmm. with Mavis O'Leary. 
So her and I, you know, really had meetings and we got people organized and we got people involved and we, that came the Trails Club, the Trails Committee, the Center Trail and, you know, all the work we did. I had did. no idea. That is so awesome. And yeah, I, different. I yeah. So, Seems like a lifetime ago, but yeah. <laughs> so Lisa's on the, on the Facebook page, Real Housewives, and so I've gotten to know you from there. And what I also love, I mean, talking about trails, is you also ride yes. horses. Yes, yeah, four horses. And you, well, you three you, horses and a you pony. You just, you know, Steve. clop Steve. out there. Steve's my favorite. <laughs> I love Steve. Yeah. He's like the ambassador <laughs> for horses to all humans. That's oh. what I say. <laughs> he's, my, yeah. Steve's my friend. He's awesome. He's so like, you ride through the trails here in Hopkins. Everywhere. Like, are, are there, are, you know, I know that that's, I think it's kind I've of a lost. I've seen you at Hopkins State Park. Yeah, and yeah, I ride like, to Ashland State Park all the time. There's Hopkinton Area Land Trust land off right. the back of me and alongside me. But that used to happen more in Hopkinton. Yeah. Even on Saddle Hill Road. When yeah. We first moved here There's in trails up behind Saddle but Hill. Yeah. People used to you know, have their horses and walk down Saddle right. Hill Road doing the trails. So you, you, you laugh, been the other I actually, <laughs> um, when GPS first came out, I yeah. actually did all the mapping for the, the Hopkins and Trails Guide oh. that we Grant, John Coolidge had got Grant Manny, and I'm galloping on my horse looking <laughs> at the, and I covered all the trails <laughs> on my horse to, to do the viewpoints, because then you had to kind of put markers to right. track where all the trails was, and that was part of, to ensure the trail connectivity within yeah. the, within Hopkinton. Wow. I mean, I, I, I know that, you know, there's been a lot of change over on that's the side of town where yeah. Weston is, and, you know, a lot of development, and there's mixed feelings and stuff, but the Legacy Farms North Road. Yeah. Um, I like it. I like it. I'm going to say, you know, even Particularly though Particularly because it takes traffic <laughs> off my road. Even, even, even though there's, there's going to be a bunch of single family homes, I'm going to say, I actually go through it a lot because it's up toward my parents' house, but the, um, there are more horses, dog walkers, and um, people pushing baby strollers than I think there will ever be human beings living on that road right, that are right. using it. It's well, just the way beautiful. they developed it. So, and that kind of goes back to that land use study mm -hmm. committee and kind of what happened with that is I think because we had the option to buy it, we mm -hmm. had a leveraging point with the developers that came in. So we, we actually kind of picked the developer in mm -hmm. a way. Um, we interviewed developers and tried to figure out who would be best for the community and Boulder Capital now Baystone came out to be that developer. There's so much. We're going yeah. to keep talking. Sorry, but we're, we're yeah. going to be winding down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Big shout out so is, much. you know, yeah. tomorrow is Live for Evan. Yeah. HCA's opens houses on Sunday. Um, and the uh, brew and whatever thing that's brew going on. Barbecue, barbecue and over at Western Nurseries that's yeah. supporting um, the uh, Jimmy, Fund. Jimmy Fund. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot going on this weekend. And, um, we're so glad you're here. And thank we'll continue you. to talk and learn from Lisa. But thank, thank you. you guys for joining thank us. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Oh, thank we're you. happy to have you. Thank you.